Today marks an important milestone in the fight against human trafficking. Today is the 10th anniversary of the signing of the U.S. Trafficking Victims Protection Act, uh, which was signed on October 28, 2000. When I first introduced that legislation in 1998, the bill was met with a wall of skepticism and opposition. People from both inside of government and throughout uh, thought that the bold new strategy that included sheltering, asylum, and protections for the victims, long jail sentences and asset confiscation for the traffickers, and tough sanctions for governments that failed to meet minimum standards was merely a solution in search of a problem. There was almost no knowledge as to what was really happening all over the world, including and especially in the United States. We know that human trafficking, or modern day slavery as we call it, is the third most lucrative criminal activity in the world. According to the International Labor Organization, human traffickers make profits in excess of $31 billion a year. And that number is rising. And in the past two years alone, over 80,000 victims have been identified and assisted worldwide. Thank you very much, Congressman. I am here uh, to present you a letter congratulating you for the first 10 years of your efforts to protect the women and children, not only of the world, but of the state of New Jersey itself. Many people think that international trafficking is just an international problem, but as you're going to hear this afternoon, it's a problem that is faced by mothers in the state of New Jersey every day. I cannot think of anything worse as a mother myself, losing my child and not being able to save that child. So I'm proud to be a part of a team that is not only congratulating you, Congressman, for what work you've done to highlight this problem in New Jersey and in the nation and across the world, but also for making me aware of it so that I can become more of a participant. As a former federal prosecutor and a former sheriff, I know and the most important thing we can do is shine a light on these types of problems so that we can not only prosecute people and put them in jail, but also get the victims of these crimes the services they need in order to survive these crimes when we're successful in finding and prosecuting the defendants. My daughter was a runaway youth that was trafficked over the borders of my state to New York and recovered after being missing for 11 months. Upon her return, it became very um, important to me and my family that the world understands that advocacy for these victims is extremely important and that immediate assessment upon their entry into our programs and into our facilities is important and a key to their recovery. So I'm here to advocate on behalf of my daughter and my family and other voiceless victims who are still harbored within the walls within our state and out of our country. Living in India, had a happy family, Life was good, but at the age of seven, I was kidnapped from my mother, ripped away from my family, and sold into slavery. I was abused, tortured. You can't even imagine what us victims go through. This is a fight where there has been success, but we are nowhere near. The next decade is the decade that we need to roll up our sleeves and end modern day slavery.